Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn about Azure Active Directory authentication methods that we have. When it comes to the one of the main feature of identity platform is to verify or authenticate credentials when a user is signing into a device or application or a service. When it comes to the password protection, by default Azure AD blocks weak passwords. For example, you may have a password as a password or password one. Uh, such a commonly known uh, passwords are completely blocked. It will not allow you to you know, choose even the passwords uh, similar to that. And a global banned password list is automatically updated and enforced that includes known weakened passwords, we call it. And if an Azure AD user tries to set their password to one of the one of these weakest passwords, um, they receive a notification to choose more secure password. So to increase the security, you can also define custom password protection policies. These policies can be filtered to block any variations of a password containing a name such as uh, your company name or location like London or maybe Brazil. Such uh, things can be uh, blocked it. Uh, and also for the hybrid security, when, when I say hybrid security, let's say you have Azure AD as well as on-premises, you can uh, integrate your Azure AD password protection with your on-premises Active Directory environment. So a component installed within your on-premises network receives a global banned password list and a custom password protection policies from Azure AD uh, will be applied uh, on your domain controllers so that they use them to uh, process the uh, password changes or the password change events. So this hybrid approach makes uh, make sure that no matter how a user is changing their credentials, you enforce uh, with a, a strong password. So that's all about the authentication or the password protection side. But let's jump into um, Azure Active Directory authentication, how it involves to secure uh, more verification methods uh, to validate your user ID and password. So if you look at, uh, uh, if you consider for the improved security, improved security and reduce the need of help desk assistance, and Azure AD authentication includes some of the key components. So uh, some of them would be the self-service password reset or we also called SSPR. So SSPR, self-service password reset, that's one of the option. And also you have the multi-factor authentication, which is, um, which will be challenge the end users to prove either a phone number based on a phone number text verification or email verification or an application uh, pop-up or maybe a phone call or phone call to their users so that they would be validated the second level of authentication uh, with the multi-factor authentication so other one would be the definitely the password less authentication we're going to talk in on this in a minute or so and also hybrid integration uh, so that you can you change the password in Azure AD that gets automatically replicated to your on-premises so that kind of you know options you can go for the hybrid integration and also you can enforce your password protection policies on your on-premises environment as we just talked about the uh, password protection uh, topic just before this component uh, introduction. Let's have a look on the first component, self-service password reset or SSPR. So what exactly this SSPR? So SSPR will, will help the users the ability to change or reset their passwords without any administrator uh, help or maybe help desk involvement. And also if a user account is locked out for some reason or they forgot their password or they can follow the prompts to unblock themselves to get a, get the back to work without any action in between maybe administrator or maybe help desk. So they do on their own. So this ability reduce the overall calls on help desk and also loss of productivity when a user cannot sign into their device or an application. So self-service password reset works uh, with the 
this at least these three different uh, scenarios as we discussed like password change or password reset or account unlock so these are the uh, scenarios it's uh, gonna work this sspr let's have a look on sspr user flow in fact we are going to do the complete demonstration on all all of these components that we are currently learning and there would be a dedicated uh, lecture of each of these components but for now just to you know understand at the high end sspr a uh, user flow like a user will go and he will redirect to password reset.microsoftonline.com or he will log into whatever the application and he can just click on there forgot password and that gets redirected to password reset.microsoftonline.com URL and then he will be challenged with the multi-factor authentication uh, to verify his real user ID let's see maybe or the text or maybe a phone call or maybe or the application verification code which generates uh, from a mobile application like authenticator uh, so you can configure within the sspr configuration side this is basically a server side you know what you configured so you can choose either one method of verification or two uh, authentication methods to be verified so once that's verified uh, what would happen is it actually sends the information to azure active directory for the self-service password reset service and uh, if the user is coming from on premises there is a feature called password write back uh, which we enable in azure ad connect this is the component we are going to install on azure uh, ad connect tool on our on premises one of the windows server machine and that could be any of the windows member server in fact you can check out the azure ad connect uh, configuration what we have talked within this module and once we have enabled the password write back options so it actually forwards the request to on-premises active directory and it just checks uh, for the password authentication whether methods are correct or not and then it writes the password back and that information sends back to the user to the whatever the new user password he sets and post to that whenever he logs in if it's a known location it's not going to ask for the user for re-verification to the mfe or based on your configuration and then it will enable the access for the end users either application from it as your cloud or from maybe on premises so that's how it's going to work for the sspr user flow let's jump into passwordless authentication so the end goal of many environment is to remove the uh, remove the use of passwords as part of the sign-in events uh, features like azure ad protection or multi-factor authentication help improve the security but a username and the password remains a week uh, from uh, in the form of authentication that can be exposed or maybe brute force attacked because if we can guess if the username is admin or something like that and it can uh, execute some kind of brute force attack so in order to secure that uh, you can use the passwordless authentication methods uh, where the credentials are provided through the use of methods like biometrics with windows hello for business or fid was security keys so, and that's where it comes into the high security because these methods of authentication cannot be duplicated by attacker because these contains your biometric authentication or maybe a security key so it's more secure and the world is moving to these kind of authentication methods i hope this helps you and uh, let's uh, go back to the previous slides and and see what we have learned so far so we talked about uh, the password security like you cannot use the known passwords or the global known passwords or the weak passwords because the password protection is by default with the azure active directory and also you have the option for the authentication to secure like you can go for self-service password reset or multi-factor authentication or passwordless authentication and also you have the hybrid integration uh, where you can reset the password uh, from Azure and that password will be right back to your Azure Active Directory I hope this is useful for you thank you for watching this
and i hope uh, you can give a feedback on my course thank you